Hi everyone! Beginning in this class, I would like to enter a new phase for our course. Instead of focusing on deconstructing global citizenship education, I would like to turn our attention to liberating frameworks for the teaching of global citizenship education. This week we will look at human rights education, which may offer some possibilities for us for critically engaging in global citizenship. An underlying principle of children's rights education is the premise of placing the children at the heart of every decision that affects them. Often this means incorporating children's voices in decision making. This will be a theme that we'll take up in greater detail next week. Fundamentally, however, children's rights education employs a rights-based approach to teaching and all other aspect of aspects of education. If we think back to Vanessa Andriotti's global citizenship framework, we're reminded of how this type of framework is in a fundamental opposition with the charity framework. In the reading for this week, Children's Rights in Education, Applying a Rights-Based Approach to Education, you'll find much information about the background of the Convention of the Rights of the Child, the, some implications for teachers, and the characteristics of a rights-respecting classroom. Further, at the end of the guide, you'll also find a series of activities that you may wish to implement in your classrooms. These range from global education and a children's rights web to strategies for mediating conflict in rights in schools. If anyone's interested in reviewing this guide as a curriculum package, I think that would be a good choice as well. As you go through this reading, you will also surely see how children's rights is also a very highly problematic topic once we scratch the surface. For starters, we're not just talking about children's rights once they become adults, but their rights now as children. Many teachers are actually reluctant to teach, to, to teach students about their rights, whether consciously or subconsciously, as this realistically could have implications for the teacher's power in the classroom, for class management, and so on. Secondly, many students take rights for granted in Canadian schools. The right to clean water, the right to shelter, the right to education is something that students see and take for granted on a daily basis in many cases. So introducing this concept for teachers requires some creativity, perhaps some experiential learning, some persuasion to go beyond the rhetoric of just the idea of rights and what it actually means to have this right. But conversely, to teach about rights infringements is simply an issue that affects others on faraway parts of the planet or in other schools, or in the context of another, is problematic too. For one, for many students, rights infringements exist here in Canada, in their own communities, in their own families, and even in their own schools. A further complication is that even if we do look at these circumstances where rights are infringed on, in a more regular and commonplace basis, what do we do about these infringements? And how are rights, in fact, even guaranteed? I know in my PhD research in Haiti, for example, many of the youth that I spoke to had no idea that there was an actual right to education, where 50% of Haitian youth are actually out of school, and then even knowing that that right exists. So what do we do about it? And how can those rights even come close to being guaranteed in a, in a place like Haiti? A further problem is the very notion of the universality of rights. So for example, if we think of our chapter on comparative education, how schools can be very different around the world, how what happens in some countries can be very different than what happens in other countries, even in terms of education. Should rights be focused on a very specific or local level as opposed to a universal level? What about this issue of cultural relativity and how far does that extend? One example of this is the Banjul Charter or the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. This charter was written in response to universal declarations to articulate how many African rights are fundamentally distinct from what is deemed as universal. And then finally, as the activity that I highlighted above demonstrates, there are often conflicts between rights. The religious rights of some students may infringe upon gender equality rights of others. How would you negotiate these conflicts as a teacher all the while employing a rights-based perspective in your classroom. There's much food for thought uh, for this week's discussion, I think in the reading and some of the elective readings as well. 
I'll stay posted and I'll look forward to your contributions this week. Speak again soon.